So if you play around with this a little bit further, you can figure out a general rule here. And the general rule is that if you have n vertices, then the number of different paths from A to B is 2 to the power of n half minus 1. And the way you can see that this formula is correct is you can plug in the 4 here. So it's 4 over 2, which is 2 minus 1 and 2 to the power of 1, that is 2. And in the quiz, we just saw that each time we add two vertices here, we have to multiply by 2. And this is exactly what happens here. Because if we add two vertices here, then the exponent here will increase by 1. And in this way, you can work your way up to larger and larger networks of this structure. So what you can see here is that the number of ways to get from A to B grows exponentially as these graphs here get more and more vertices. And I'm now going to ask an algorithmic question. And the algorithmic question is a very simple one. And that is, what is the fastest way to get from A to B or the shortest way to get from A to B? And if you have had an algorithms class, you might know that this is a problem that can be solved in polynomial time. So there are many algorithms actually that can figure out in polynomial time what the shortest way is to get from A to B. But this means that having many possible solutions cannot mean intractability, because here is a case where we do have many possible solutions. There are exponentially many ways to get from A to B, but if we ask an algorithm to figure out the shortest one for us, it doesn't obviously not have to consider an exponential number of solutions to come up with the answer, because otherwise there would be no polynomial time algorithm to figure out shortest paths between two points A and B. And so for vertex cover, click and independent set, this means that if we want to show these problems to be intractable, it's not enough to point out that there's an exponential number of solutions, because that does not mean that there can be no polynomial time algorithm. 